we're examining the incorporation of white clover into grass-based systems. Um, I suppose for the last 30 or so years there hasn't been a lot of interest in white clover because fertiliser nitrogen has been cheap and a cheap input for farmers. But now we have restrictions with the nitrates directive and also the cost of fertiliser is increasing so farmers are looking for other sources of nitrogen. And clover is a very obvious source. So white clover is ideal for grazing systems. It can fix between 150 and 250 kilos of nitrogen per year. Um, it's also highly digestible, which, which helps to increase the, um, the digestibility of the sward, particularly in the, in the mid-season. So from about mid-June onwards. So if you look at this graph here, this red line here, you can, this is the sward clover content, and you can see that increasing across the year. Um, to incorporate white clover into your systems, the best option is to do it when you're reseeding your swards. Um, so to do that, you would sow approximately um, between three and five kilos of, nitri of clover seed per hectare. So at five kilos, you would expect a very good establishment of clover, maybe upwards of an average of 25% per over the year. Um, clover grows um, in a way that you have low clover, swar clover content until about mid-June, and after that, it could be up 25 to 30%. And that's what you would be targeting at farm level. Then it, it decreases gradually across the year. After sowing clover into the sward, it's important to control broadleaved weeds using a post-emergence spray. And then follow that on. Once the seed has emerged and you have about a thousand kilos of dry matter on the sward, you should graze off the sward. And then after that, graze it about every 18 days. Graze it down to four centimetres, which is really important to establish the clover in the sward um, and to allow the persistence of the, of the clover through stolon development. Alternatively, you can over sow clover into an existing sward. Do that in May, June, in May or June after a silage harvest when you have virtually no grass left in the sward or after very tight grazing. Once the, once the grass starts to grow, then uh, again, go with tight grazing just to allow the clover to establish. Uh, Minimise the fertiliser application um, immediately after the, the, the over sowing with the clover. Um, in terms of um, grazing management then, the good grazing management that dairy farmers practice is very, very beneficial for white clover persistence. So if we look at this box here, we would be looking at grazing tight in the first rotation and the last rotation. So grazing down to about three and a half centimetres, very important for clover persistence over the year, over the winter and into the spring. This allows um, stolon on production. Then during the main grazing season, graze every 18 to 21 days, grazing down to four centimetres. So your normal good grazing management. Um, and finally, don't allow your pre-grazing herbage masses to get very high. So, you know, you want a nice sward that you would normally like to put your cows into. So somewhere between 1,300 and 1,500 kilos of dry matter per hectare pre-grazing herbage mass. And if you, if you manage your grass well, clover can fit into the system. So we've done some experiments looking at incorporating clover at our normal fertilizer rates so or 250 kilos of nitrogen because uh, realistically that's where a lot of dairy farmers are they have to feed their cows so if we just look at this this um, graph here this is an experiment we did last year where we had a grass only sward receiving 250 kilos of nitrogen and a grass clover sward receiving 250 kilos of nitrogen over the year, the grass clover swards with the 250 kilos of nitrogen grew an extra one tonne of grass dry matter per hectare compared to the grass only with the, with the 250 kilos of nitrogen. So that's an extra tonne of grass in your system. And coupled with that, we actually saw an increase in milk solids production. So the green line here is the grass clover sward receiving 250 and the blue line is the grass only sward receiving 250 kilos of nitrogen. And as you can see from mid-June onwards, when the real benefit of clover in the system starts to kick in, with high sward clover content, the high quality of the clover, the clover herbage in with the grass, you see that the increase you see increased milk solids for the remainder of the year. So the cows grazing the grass clover system would have had higher milk solids over the year. And just finally, in this, in this box here, we have an experiment that we've been running at Moore Park for the last, we're into the fourth year. So this graph has three years results. And we see that even at the 240 kilos of nitrogen, which is a high in input, we're growing about one to 1.2 tonnes extra herbage over the year in, in, the, in the grass clover system. And we, in that, we have about 23% sward clover content 
uh, average across the year, which is very, very respectable quantity of clover in terms of seeing some benefit from it. Why clover works within the grazing system is it, it uh, grows very well with perennial ryegrass. Uh, it's conducive to grazing. It's very tolerant of grazing um, and it fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere, which is which is its main benefit, adding extra nitrogen to the system. For anyone who's interested in incorporating clover into their system, they should seriously consider it. But remember, you need to be a good grassland manager to get clover to work in your system.